Hello everyone and hello especially to my American and Canadian viewers because I've got something in my hands that uh, you may be familiar with. Yes, it's another American Hoover. Da, 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 da. It's a Hoover Sprint 100. Again, I got this from eBay. Now, this is supposed to be new and unused. The packaging is a little bit shelf worn, a little bit faded. It might have been in a shop window. This is model S1211. And to me, well, it's a bit like a deluxe porter power. Let's get it open. Regular viewers to my channel may know that there's a little bit of a running gag where I try to match my socks with the vacuum cleaner I'm demonstrating or unboxing. Well, that's all by the by now. I've decided to drop that idea. It was too much trouble. I was buying far too many socks. So now what I'm going to do is unbox and demonstrate vacuum cleaners on different rugs. And because this machine is from the late 80s, I believe, I am going to unbox it on this sort of, I think it's an 80s style rug, but it's going to be a very good rug for demos because it's got several different elements. It's got cut pile, it's got loop pile, it's got uh, ridges, so it'll make a very good demo rug for various vacuums. But anyway, it's a nice 80s-ish backdrop for this late 80s vacuum. So let's have a look. Now from this cellar I also bought another vacuum cleaner, another Hoover from this period, but uh, you'll be seeing that at a later date. So I, I think I'll just be able to pull this one out in one go. There, that was easy. <clears throat> okay, let's have a look at this. And of course, before I plug it in, I will need to get my special black box so I can use it on UK electricity because this, of course, will be 120 volts. Right, now this head looks familiar. It's very similar to the head that was provided with the first American vacuum you saw on this channel, the uh, Porter Power, commercial Porter Power machine. But that uh, head, I think, was black, was it? Or grey? Grey. A darker grey than this. But it's the same, same sort of thing. You've got uh, edge cleaning. There's one brush, which depending on the mode, determines where the brush is. So on rug setting, the brush floats. And when you flick it to bare floor, it should, yes, it should remain static more or less for your bare floor cleaning. So that's the main carpet and hard floor head. Here we have the hose, it's not a bad length, actually probably about one and a half meters. I don't know what that is in metric, I should really have a conversion for you Americans on the, um, the imperial measurements, um, but anyway, I'm sure you can look it up. So here's the uh, handle end, there's no suction control on this, but I believe there were deluxe models that would have incorporated the little slide suction. And um, it's got Hoover's twist lock fitting there. Uh, that's the end that fits into the machine with the little clip to release it. Now, as I say, this is the basic bottom of the line. The price tag on this is uh, $79.99, obviously nearly $80, so I don't know if that's cheap or expensive, but this is the bottom bottom model. I believe there were models up from this. I don't know if it was a Sprint or Tempo, but you could get a machine of this sort of size that had a Powermatic uh, electrically powered head, which would have been fantastic. So this is the supplied sort of all-purpose brush, and I believe Deluxe models came with a separate dusting brush and a separate all-purpose nozzle, but this being the base model, comes with that. There should be a crevice tool. Ah, oh, there we are. So sort of a medium length pip fitting tool there for your crevices, your nooks and crannies. Two plastic tubes, again finished in this gray. I'm uh, happy to say that this is definitely brand new and unused. 
And finally, we've got the machine. Oh, we've got a spare bag. And funnily enough, I actually have a packet of bags to fit this cleaner. Many years ago, um, a work friend of mine went to New York, I believe it was, and from Macy's, she brought me back a couple of packs of Hoover bags. And when I saw this pack that she bought me, I thought, oh, well, I don't have that one. You can't get that one in this country. But I kept it, and I'm glad I did, because now I've actually got the cleaner to go with the bags. So these take uh, Type R dust bags. So unlike the Porter Power that um, had a cloth shakeout bag, this does come as standard with paper bags. Got the instructions. A little bit worse for wear, a little bit faded. Um, it's got uh, February 1989. This will date from the late 80s. Now I did know about this cleaner long ago because this was one of the cleaners that featured in a leaflet that Hoover UK sent me and they got them from uh, Hoover USA when they were both companies connected. And I remember seeing this at the time and we didn't have anything like this. We had the Porter Power and I thought, oh, that'd be great, I'd love one of those. Little did I know, X number of years later, I've actually got one. So yeah, this is the instructions. Very basic, basic cleaner this, isn't it? It's got cord storage, you wrap it around the machine. Showing you how to fit the bag. General maintenance. Then we've got a Hoover consumer response card here. That's to be sent off to the Hoover Company, 101 East Maple Street, North Canton, Ohio. And uh, oh, we've got to tick, tick your reasons. Reasons for buying Hoover. How did you become aware of the product purchased from my age and household income? So the reasons they, they've got you to tick for buying Hoover are brand reputation, brand previously owned, style slash appearance, value for the price, quality, special features or other and you have a tiny little amount of space to write in the other reason. I'd have to write because I collect them. And again, what's this? Oh, ah, well, this might be interesting. I was going to, oh, look at that. I was going to keep this short, but I think it's in, you know, as a piece of history. I mean, this is, it's, a, you know, it's not vintage. It's, uh, but it's quite interesting for those of you who would like to see what came with one of these when they were brand new, because most of the time, if you want one of these, it's a second-hand uh, one from eBay or a flea market or a charity shop. What do you call them? Uh, a, a thrift store. That's what you call them. Look at that. Meet the Elite. Designed with the features you want. Powerful six amp motor for deep cleaning, Lightweight, weighs approximately 12 pounds. Four level automatic height adjustment. Dual brushed edge cleaning to get close to baseboards. Headlight, top fill deluxe bag for quick and clean bag change. Hoover keeps making it better. So I suppose Hoover thought, well, if you've got one of these, an elite upright like that would go very well because you could use the sprint for all your above floor cleaning and your hard floors. And for your carpets, you can use the lightweight Elite because that's an Elite that doesn't have the tools attached. I expect you could buy tools for it though. On the back of this envelope, we've also got an order form for spares. So you can buy a pack of five bags for $3.49. A reusable cloth bag, oh, it says fits tempo only, that's $7.00. Air freshener tablets would be $1.98 and a power nozzle belt, obviously not for this one, that would cost you for pack of two, two pounds, no, sorry, two dollars, two dollars ten cents. And finally in the paperwork we've got uh, warranty information, full one year warranty for domestic use. Ah, but look, I didn't know this. For the Hoover Convertible and Decade 800 cleaners, you get a full five-year warranty and also a full five-year warranty for Hoover cleaners with electronic control. And on the back, we've got various service centers, Alabama, Arizona, California, Hawaii, Illinois, 
Minnesota, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and lots more besides. Okay, let's have a look at the cleaner. Here it is, and what a lovely little dinky thing. Yeah, to me, it's like a deluxe Porter Power, but it's a much nicer shape than the Porter Power. It really does look more like a very compact canister. In fact, this is very similar in looks to the one you can still buy now, not Hoover, but you can buy the Eureka Mighty Might, can't you? It's a bit similar looking to that. Uh, it's lovely bit of blue and red 80s graphics here, Hoover Sprint 100. We've just got a single rocker switch at the top. Here's the cable in a nice grey, light grey to match. And of course it's got the American plug on it, so I'll have to plug that into my converter. I wonder how noisy. I don't think this is going to be an ultra quiet vacuum somehow. Not a very long cable either. And there you go, that's the, uh, the moulded on American plug. Of course, unlike most of the Porter Powers, there was there did have some models with wheels. This has got uh, two two wheels at the back, and you've even got a little wheel there. Not a swivel wheel; it is fixed. I expect it. Uh, yeah, moves quite well. Under here, we've also got the uh, rating sticker so I'll read that out. So the Hoover Cleaner, the Hoover Company North Canton Ohio 44720 model S1211 120 volts 60 hertz 6.5 amps bag type R for household use only. The serial is 0789000 and it was assembled in Mexico parts made in USA when servicing use only identical replacement parts okay let's have a look at the bag i wonder does it stand on its end oh yes it will it stands on its end sort of for when you need to change the bag so there's a little button here at the front oh and also while i'm in this vicinity i don't know if we can quite pick it up with the lights it's embossed can we see that I'm trying to get to it so you can see anyway that says cord wrap Right then. Ah, so the bag comes away with the bag door. Oops. Ah, I've pulled it off. Tiny, tiny bag. There you go. Oh. That's a little bit uh, distorted. Well, if that's the only thing that's wrong with it, I'll be happy. That little flap there that's supposed to stop dirt falling out it's not such a problem with a, a canister style machine but um some machines that are sort of this way up uh, like a stick vac it is important that the dirt doesn't fall out when you pick it up not sure i can't see any date wheel and <clears throat> there's no filter on this this is again it's like the porter power there's just a grid just trying to get the light i don't know if we can quite see really should shine the light in there. Ah, there we are. You see, there's a grid there. So that's designed to be just brushed, brushed clean. So the filtration on this, I expect there's some, uh, not that I can see, I can't see any sort of filter or diffuser at the back actually. But um, yeah, the filtration is basically a single layer paper bag. So I expect these did let, let quite a lot of fine dust out of the exhaust. But back then people didn't care about that and manufacturers didn't really go on about filtration as much. It's probably more about power in the 80s. It was more about, you know, power, performance. Doesn't matter that they're spewing out a lot of the dust they're picking up. What I will do, before I do a proper demo of this, I'm going to put Possibly a Miele filter might fit there. I will we'll have a filter that will fit over that and just cover that just to keep keep the dust out It it's it's silly that it doesn't have one. So that's the um, bag Just put it's just a push fit 
I think again this is similar. I mean I've got uh, that little Oric as well. I haven't seen that for a long time. I've still got it. Um, the little Oric that's a companion to the uh, Oric XL. So it's lovely. I do like it. I bet uh, some of my American viewers are thinking, oh, what's he getting excited over that for? But of course, this could possibly be, I'm not saying it is, but it could possibly be the only Hoover Spint 100 in the UK. Oh, nice little click. Nice, nice touch having a, a silver hose. Yeah. Oops, that's a bit stiff. Hang on, folks. Ooh, can't turn the locking ring. What have I done wrong? Ugh. Right, I'll look at that later. I don't want to force anything. Best not to force it. And bear in mind, this has been in its box for a long, long time. A lot longer than it would have been uh, expected to be have left in the box, if you know what I mean. Right, okay, well my magic black box is upstairs. Oh, I'll have to nip up and get it, and then we can hopefully see if this Hoover Spoon works. Okay, it's time for the big switch on. Let's plug in the Hoover Spoon 100 into my magic black box. Now, when I turn my box on, the Hoover Spoon might turn on itself, I'm not sure. It rather depends on uh, if the switch is in the on position. So I'm going to risk holding the machine while I turn it on. It's main switch. Okay. Ooh. Right. It's not on. But mains should be running to the machine. So let's see if it works. Might, might, sounds a little bit dry on wind down but that's quieter than I expected it to be I don't think I really can grease anything up in here what might happen as it gets warmed up and used for a bit it's possible but that uh, any grease that's in the motor has gone a bit hard so I'm hoping with a bit of uh, warmth from the motor it might sort of loosen up and sound a bit smoother Ah, oh, it's odd, isn't it? Normally, I've just noticed that you can see the screw holes here. But there's also more screw holes this side. I thought it would just have screw holes one side and they'd keep the side with the actual printing of the brand, the Hoover Sprint. I thought that would be kept clear. Never mind. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about that. Let's uh, see what the bare suction is like without a attachment. I'm having trouble with this um, handle. I think I'll, I'll just have to try it with the uh, hose end. Not hugely powerful. I think I'd say possibly the porter power is more powerful. Certainly enough power for your above floor jobs, for your car, ideal for the stairs as well. I'd love a powerhead version. I think it was possibly, you can comment below, I did have a, a leaflet, I still might have that. If I've got the leaflet that shows the tempo with the powerhead, I'll show you a picture now, because I do have a few of the leaflets left. But anyway, sir, I do like it. There's another cleaner coming up, as I said, from this era and it was from the same seller and kindly she packaged them both together and I saved quite a lot of shipping costs but I did have to pay import charges before these were delivered because it wasn't listed on the uh, eBay listing so I had a bit of a shock when I got the bill from Royal Mail saying I know <laughs> well it wasn't that bad I was expecting I was expecting to pay around whatever I paid. It was about £56 I paid on top of the price of the cleaners and the shipping. But often now on eBay, you can buy things and the customs charge is included. So once you've paid, you've not got any sort of nasty surprises or shocks. 
Right, oh, I think that looks... <laughs> I think that goes very well with this carpet. I don't know about you, I just think... I saw this carpet, this rug, on eBay again from the Argos clearance uh, shop and it was about £30 and it is a big, big rug and it uh, doesn't really go in my house though, it doesn't go with any of the colours I've got but it's one I'll just keep rolled up and um, unroll for unboxings from the 80s and demos of 80s vacuums. I've already got in mind my Hoover Turbo Master looked fantastic on this rug. Just for a quick demo, I've put down some rolled oats onto this rug. It should be able to cope with these, surely. Let's hope so. So there you go, that's another American vacuum to add to my growing collection of 120 volt cleaners. I don't know why I didn't do it sooner, to be honest. It's not that difficult. It is quite expensive to buy vacuum cleaners from another country, especially if there are voltage concerns that you have to address. But all in all, buying that voltage converter was one of the best things I did because it gives me more scope to buy even more vacuum cleaners because, you know, I don't think I've got enough, do you? Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments or any history you can give me on the Hoover Sprint, please comment below. And I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Bye for now.